I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Now I want to talk just a bit here about the evolution of king crabs from a hermit crab ancestor. Um, and of course the, the question with that is um, how do you get there from here? Obviously there's a big difference between a king crab and a hermit crab in body shape. Um, but there's a general term for this and we see this throughout the crustacea. Um, it's a term called carcinization. This means becoming more crab-like. So a lot of um, organisms uh, the crab-like body shape, the short uh, body with the abdomen reduced and hidden um, is a very efficient shape and so it has been um, basically reinvented several times. Um, this right here, this is a uh, actually an, another hermit crab, uh, one of the land hermit crabs uh, found in the South Pacific, Burgus latro, um, has gone undergone carcinization as you can see. Um, also within the uh, the Galatheoid anemurans, um, like this here is a porcelain crab called the thick clawed porcelain crab has also um, can be seen to be carcinized. But the question is, is why? Why, um, why would a hermit crab, which does perfectly well as they are, uh, abandon their shell, abandon that lifestyle that has served them for at least like 70 million years? I, I maybe even long. I think it's longer than that. One very good reason for uh, giving up a borrowed snail shell um, is the fact that finding suitable shells can sometimes be difficult for hermit crabs, meaning as they grow, they need to constantly find themselves a larger and larger shell to move into. Um, if they cannot find a larger shell, um, they actually uh, subject themselves to being preyed upon by fish or um, uh, other crabs um, because they can't withdraw into their shell. Um, a number of hermit crabs um, have gone through partial carcinization as a way around this, um, opting for smaller shells, um, meaning that part of their abdomen and carapace has been uh, calcified, hardened, and their abdomen reduced so that they can actually live in smaller snail shells. Um, this one right here, this is uh, Pagurus or Pseudosiculus, um, one of our common species that uses uh, fairly small shells for their body size and um, they run. Um, they're, they're, built, they're made for speed. Now back to the issue of getting there from here. Um, I'm not going to get into all of the details, uh, the changes between a king crab and a hermit crab. I'm just going to focus on a few of them. And as I had mentioned, uh, we are fortunate in the North Pacific to have um, examples of at least the morphological grades of these intermediates still alive, which is pretty pretty neat. Um, so, right, I'm just looking right near. I'm going to look at the, uh, if you look at a hermit crab, the thorax of a hermit crab, um, because of the fact that they're protected inside of a snail shell, most of um, their carapace is uncalcified, it's soft. Um, the calcification consists of a dorsal shield, uh, right you see right behind the eyes, um, while the rest of the carapace is soft and membrous. Um, if we look at a uh, more carcinized hermit crab, this is Labidocaris splendens, or splendescens, um, this species is one of those that I had talked about that uses a greatly reduced shell. In this species, the shield is still present, however, the membrous portion, portion of the carapace is partially calcified and hardened. If we look at uh, the more primitive king crabs, we see that the carapace shield is still present, and the majority of the carapace is strongly calcified. Um, however, it's still soft, around, especially around the margins and underneath. Um, when we get to the advanced or more advanced lithodid crabs, king crabs, like the red king crab here, the shell is completely hardened um, and there are only small portions of it are membrous. We find the same pattern for the abdomen, the tail. Um, in a uh, standard hermit crab or regular hermit crab, the, the abdomen is elongate. Um, it's kind of sausage shaped and it's you see it's partially coiled. Um, this helps it fit inside of a snail shell. Um, however, when we get to more carcinized hermit crabs, again, like our uh, friend Labidocaris splendescens, again, we see that the, the, the abdomen is greatly reduced. Um, in fact, Labidocaris uses a tiny little shell um, on the tip of it, and they rely on running. Uh, they run sort of like a spider. They're quite fast. Um, and then again, moving on to the uh, primitive, uh, the more primitive um, of the lithodid crabs. Uh, this here is Dermaturus manti. Um, it's got a coiled abdomen, like a hermit crab, um, 
but it's still very very fleshy and held underneath it it doesn't they never use a shell to protect their abdomen but they keep it hidden underneath their body um, here's another primitive lithodid this is a cantholithodes hispidus um, this belonged to a group of lithodids called the uh, Haplogastrinae. It's the subfamily they belong to, and this abdomen is very typical of that group. Um, here you can see the underneath. It's uh, it's got a few small spines on it, a few rough granules, but it's altogether quite soft. Um, and when we get into the more advanced um, lithodid crabs, this here is Lithodes equispina, the golden king crab. I've outlined some of the plates on the abdomen in black to make them more visible. Um, these are what these plates are are fused together nodules embedded like the old the one I had showed earlier there's little nodules um, to protect it embedded it kind of like um, oh like chain mail or something um, embedded in the skin of the abdomen in the uh, advanced lithodids those nodules are f partially all all are in part fused together um, and they fuse and they they form plates um, in uh, lithodes. Um, which is sort of an intermediate advanced. Um, the plates are exist around the margins, but the center region are still consist just of um, individual spiny nodules embedded in a leather-like ab abdomen. Um, when we look at the uh, advanced lithodids, um, this is a uh, cryptolithodes um, uh, sichensis. Um, it's the plates look very much like you'd see in a true crab. They're completely fused. Um, there's no members portion whatsoever. They, um, they, they fit together tight and are completely protected. Funny little sand hopper basking in the sun. A dancing and a hopping, having lots of fun. A bit of sand landed in that hopper's eye. Man, the little sand hopper said, My, oh my, I got one leg missing. I got one leg missing. How do I get around? Shiny, shiny fishy in the ocean blue. I swam into a sewage pipe, poo, poo, poo. Said I'm in the shit, I better take a dive. Stuck his head out of the water and began to dive. I got one leg missing. One leg missing. I got one leg missing. How do I get around? Dinosaur, he bought bones. He read a magazine about a thing called clones. He went to the Yankees for an interview. The sign says, I'm sorry, but we can't take you. You got one leg missing. Uh -uh. One leg missing. You got one leg missing. How do you get around? Little Miss Amoeba, pretty as could be. I didn't know if she was he or he was she. She said, I better split in mercy, she was too. They both began a chorus that went woo woo woo. I got one leg missing. One leg missing. I got one leg missing. I do, I, I do, I, I do, I get around with one leg missing. One leg missing. I got one leg missing. How do I get around? All right.